Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini version 14, and today we're going to make a star sphere. So let's get right to it. I'm going to control click on the sphere, and a star sphere is kind of like a background environment uh, that sits around your camera. So the camera will be inside here, and uh, it emulates, say, stars in the background uh, for space scenes. So let's go ahead and rename this to Star Sphere. And we will go ahead and uniformly scale this up to a thousand. We'll press spacebar G to zoom out, press the W key for wireframe, and we'll activate points. Now, uh, the way we're going to control this is through an image map or a texture, a noise based texture. So I'm going to go ahead and split my screen left to right and I'm going to convert this new scene view into a composite view and we will rename this network to star noise uh, go inside and uh, before we go any further we're going to go up to edit and choose composition settings and change our final output from the COP network to 1024 by 1024. Accept. Move my mouse over into this network and uh, type tab gen and we'll use a VOP COP to generator. We'll right click and type null and we'll rename it to out image. Let's go ahead and dive inside the cop, pop cop. We'll make it full screen and uh, zoom in just a little so you guys can see this a bit better. Uh, nothing fancy going on here. We're just going to use two nodes. We'll say noise and I will choose the turbulent noise. And we'll route the output to R, G, and B. The same exact one. This will make it a grayscale value. Now we have a position here, but there's no P value over here, so we have to make our own. So I'm going to press tab and type float. We'll do float to vector, and we'll take the X, go to the first one, the Y to the second one, and Z will just remain zero. We don't have to connect. We can route this to position, and let's drop back to one screen, or back to this mode, and uh, Use the mouse wheel to zoom out, and we now have noise. I'm going to make it 3D noise and choose original Perlin. We'll drop the frequency, we'll move it up, I guess. And the concept here is wherever there's white, there will be stars, and wherever it's dark, there will not be stars. So let's return to the obj level dive into our star sphere and uh, right click and we'll type a trib and choose the attribute from map. We'll go ahead and visualize it and you'll see we get some color along our wireframe and that's due to the default of the UV color dot rat. So let's repurpose this composite view to a tree view. And as soon as we do that our properties have changed so we need to rebrowse to our attribute from map. I'm just clicking here and then we will click and hold down the mouse button and drag this over to here and let go. And that will give us the path to uh, our COP network output image. And then move to the beginning of the line, type OP colon, move our mouse down in here and click. So that gives us our color information from the map in our network. So now we're going to right click and type scatter and we'll visualize it and we'll go ahead and close this guy out. Close all tabs. And so now you can see we've got points evenly scattered inside this giant sphere. So we're generating by density and we'll activate the density attribute and we immediately get a red flag. If we read the tooltip, it's because we don't, there is an invalid attribute. It's not specified. Density doesn't exist. 
But if we look in our list, CD does exist. Whoops, I got to get rid of density. Delete, click away. And now when we look over here, you can see we've got points where based upon our noise map that we created in COPS. So let's go ahead and um, move this up to say 5,000 so we get a lot more. We can clearly see our pattern now. And we'll go to output attributes and we'll output P scale radius. And now the magic here is going to happen. Right click, we'll type a trib, an not an attribute wrangle. Sorry about that. We'll right click, we'll type point. We want to use a point wrangle instead. We'll visualize this and I'm going to uh, bring up Notepad here or text edit. And this is the code that we're going to paste in there. So I'm just going to leave this up for a second or two so you guys can see it on your screen and type it in. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard, click back over here and paste. Now, when you paste code into uh, any kind of wrangle, it's VEX code that gets compiled when this text box loses focus. You can see it has focus here. If I move down here and click, it refreshes. So at this point, we need a camera to actually see our stars. So let's go ahead and click the camera icon, and we have a freeform placement happening. Let's pl press return or enter. That will place the camera at world origin. Let's look through the camera now and we can see we have stars. And if we lock the camera to view, we can space bar, we can move around. Let's get rid of that construction grid. So we can see we've got stars all around us in various patterns and gaps. And this is good. This is working uh, the way we want it. So let's go ahead and set up a quick render. We'll choose the camera, we'll hit render, and while that's calculating, I'm going to drop into the out network and tweak the mantra node here. I'm going to set this to 48, set sampling to 2, 2, 2, and turn off ray variance, and I'm going to allow motion blur, and we'll turn off preview over here. We'll return back to obj dive into star sphere and let's continue tweaking uh, this system now the reason why we're getting all white over here is because um, we'll go ahead and hit stop on that it's because they're so big so if we hit scatter here return to options we have this scale by radii set this to 0 0.01 and we'll hit render And we wait, and all of a sudden we get stars, or what I'm calling stars. They really kind of look like molecules, and they're kind of horsey. They're very big. So let's just drop it down to, to O1. Click away. And maybe we could go even to, say, O5, even smaller. So there's our stars. And let's go ahead and uh, press stop, click on scene view. And uh, we'll, we're going to animate the camera here. So we'll select the camera, move up here to translate, alt-click on the word, alt-click on rotate. We will move to the end, activate real time, and we'll just kind of pan around and drag a little bit here so we get some motion. And then we'll alt-click on Translate and Rotate again. Rewind and play. And so these are our stars. Now in order to get motion blur to happen, you have to actually activate that under the Render uh, Sampling tab. So you click Render Sampling, Activate Geometry Velocity Blur. And now if we jump into Render View, and hit render. We'll see we get motion blur on our stars and 
we can just kind of scrub around here and see that that's happening. So let's go ahead and talk about, we're going to go back into Star Sphere here real quick before I finish up. We'll talk about the code a little bit. And what's going on here, let's press stop on render for a second, and we'll split this back out, split left, right, and we'll right click on render view and choose geometry spreadsheet. Now what this VEX code is doing is it's, it's creating an attribute called star size just with this single line and it's populating that attribute with random size between 0 and 1 based upon the point numbers that are calculated by the scatter. If we look down here we've got some low numbers 0 0.1, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 so it's working correctly. Then we're taking P scale, which already existed because Scatter outputted it, and we're multiplying it by this Scatter Radii, or the Scale Radius button, basically. And you can play with these other Relax and other features within Scatter to continue to refine your star field. So. The, the next uh, chunk of code here deals with colorizing it. So this reassigns P scale by star size, which is a random number, times the radius. Now with CD we're doing the same thing. I'm basically overriding the color information with new information based upon the star size. And I, I basically there may be a better way to do this, but I've, I've basically divided stars into four categories. There's the big ones, 0.75%, and then 50% is another size, 25 is another, and 15 is another. And this bra curly braces three numbers deal is actually a vector. So you can think of this as XYZ, or in this case, RGB. And the way I picked some of these numbers, and I'll just show you my trick here, I just put down a color node, and I just pick a color. So say I want this, uh, we'll close out, and I look here at my fields, and I've got 0 0.97 and 0 0.02. I'll just kind of copy that. We'll go back to our code, and say I want uh, all the 50% ones to be pink. So I'll just paste that in, and then I remember this said 0 0.97 approximately, and we'll move down here, click away, and we'll click render again, and we should see some pink colors appear in our stars. And there they are. We've got these magenta colored stars. So this is one way to control the size and color of stars along with go back to composite view star noise along with the noise here and you can continue to play around with uh, refining your noise I mean this is the, the most basic noise there's lots of lots more you can do with this so have fun make your own star fields uh, fly your camera around and uh, enjoy and with that I'm out <laughs>